Welcome everyone. Today we discuss about uh, CPU scheduling algo. In the previous class also we discuss uh, some non preemptive and preemptive scheduling algo like first come first serve scheduling, shortest job scheduling, shortest remaining time scheduling, round robin scheduling algo, priority scheduling algo. Okay. So today we discuss uh, some others scheduling algo. Myself, Mumshumi Shah, Assistant Professor of Computer Science and Engineering Department from Narula Institute of Technology. So today we discuss about multi-level queue scheduling. Just look at the picture. Uh, in this algorithm, the ready queue is partitioned into number of ready queue. So here, in the picture we see there are three ready queues are there so each ready queue is capable of loading same type of job that means for system process there is one ready queue for interactive process there is another ready queue for branch processes there is another ready queue that means multi-level queue scheduling is another class of scheduling algorithm has been created for situation in which processes are easily classified into different groups. The ready queue is partitioned into separate queue for example for foreground process or interactive process there is one ready queue for background process there is or batch process there is another ready queue for system process there is separate ready queues okay. So each queue has its own scheduling algo. Like for example, the ready queue partition into here in this diagram we see the ready queue is partitioned into three ready queue. So one ready queue is for foreground process, one ready queue is for background process, and one ready queue is for system process. Suppose the system process queue may follow first come first serve scheduling algo. The interactive processes ready queue may follow shortest job scheduling algo and the background or batch processes queue may follow round robin scheduling algo. Okay so for separate ready queues if there are another ready queue maybe that ready queue follow shortest remaining time algo. Okay so Inter-queue scheduling is there, for example, fixed priority scheduling and time slice between the queue, like 80% for interactive or 20% for batch, uh, they are categorized. So, what will happen if all the queue have some processes? Which process should get the CPU? To determine this, uh, the scheduling among the queue is necessary. Therefore, what we should do? We fix priority preemptive scheduling method. Like each queue has absolute priority. Okay. Uh, look at the. Okay. So look at the picture the system process having the highest priority queue okay the system process having the highest priority of all and the batch process having the lowest priority of all so each queue has the absolute priority over the lower priority so in this example no process in this okay so we see that the Q1 having the highest priority over Q3. So if any batch process in Q3 is running and the system process or interactive means any processes come and Q1 and Q2. So the ready queue, the batch process is preempted. And the second condition is time slicing. In this method, each queue gets certain period of CPU time and it will get the it can use the schedule its own processes like Q1 
Q1 takes 50% of CPU time. Q2 got 30% of the CPU time and Q3 get 20% of CPU time. Okay. So now look at this problem. Okay, one example is given. Here four processes is there and the corresponding arrival time is also given. For first three process, the arrival time is zero and the fourth process arrival time is 10 millisecond and their CPU burst time that means execution time is also given here for process 1 execution time is 4 process 2 execution time is 3 process 3 execution time is 8 and process 4 execution time is 5 and their Q number is also given here process P1 P2 are, are resides in Q1 and P3 process resides in Q2 so they three, these three process come at 0 millisecond that means at the at starting after 10 millisecond means the middle of the execution fourth process comes okay and it enter in q1 here the priority of q1 is greater than q2 and q1 uses round robin scheduling algo and this round robin scheduling have, algo have time quantum 2 millisecond and suppose q2 follows first come first serve okay now look at the nav chart here initially q1 executes that means first p1 process starts his execution and it for q1 uh, q follow round robin scheduling algo with time quantum 2 so after 2 millisecond it uh, switches from p1 to p2 so p2's execution time is 3 so it execute 2 millisecond after 2 millisecond it is switches now see p3's p3 is resides in ready q2 and ready q ha have lower priority than ready q1 so now the p2 switches and p1 comes into the picture now again p1 starts his execution it have two millisecond remaining so it completed from four to six it completes his execution now it give the control to p2 again now p2 execute one millisecond now p now ready q1 is q1 is empty there is no process p1 completed his execution p2 is also executed okay so there is no process left in q1 now it look into it comes into ready q2 in ready q2 there is only one process p3 so p3 starts its execution it executes its burst time is 8 so from 7 it starts its execution 7 to 8 8 to 9 9 to 10 there is no problem but at 10 millisecond another process comes p4 comes and it enter into q1 ready q1 so what happened then ready q1 having the priority higher priority than ready q2 so the cpu switches from p3 to p4 okay so the cpu at 10 millisecond cpu switches from p3 to p4 and p4's execution time is 5 millisecond so it execute after that p4 terminates then p3 got the chance again okay now p3 got the chance again and it execute 3 millisecond okay so so 15 to 20 p3 executes okay 15 to 20 p3 executes now the advantage of multi-level queue scheduling is its flexibility it can be used to implement many diff different policies and the disadvantage of multi-level queue scheduling is it is complex compared to the basic algo and here the starvation is arise for lowest level process okay that means some process resides in the lower priority queue it never get the chance so starvation may occur now, 
The second another algo is multi-level feedback queue scheduling. In multi-level feedback queue scheduling allow a process to move between queues. The idea to separate processes with CPU different CPU bus time characteristics. If a process uses too much of CPU time, it will be moved to lower priority queue. Similarly, a process that wait too long in a lower priority queue may be moved into a higher priority queue. So this is the form of aging that is to prevent starvation. Okay, so look at this picture. Here, one ready queue is there, first ready queue. All the process enter here. Here, the time quantum is set 8 milliseconds. So, uh, those process who have less than 8 millisecond execution time, they got the chance and after execution, it terminates. And some processes having higher priority uh, uh, execution time more than 8, they will move to the second queue, second ready queue. They will move to the, okay, those are not finishes that will move to the second ready queue. In red, second ready queue, the time quantum is set in 16 millisecond. Okay, so now those process having less than 8 millisecond, they already execute and terminate. Those having more than 8 milliseconds, they will move to this time. So after 16 milliseconds, some of some processes are already executed. They also terminate. They also terminate. And some processes having higher execution time than 16. So they will move to the third ready queue, ready queue 3. So here we follow first come first serve. That means one process enter. And it will execute then it got the cpu it execute and terminate okay so in general the multi-level feedback queue scheduler is defined by the following parameter the number of queues the scheduling algo for each queue the method used to determine when to upgrade the process to a higher priority queue the method used to determine when to demote the process to a lower priority queue. The method used to determine which queue a process will enter when the process needs service. The definition of a multi-level feedback queue scheduler makes it a most general CPU scheduling algo. It can be configured to match a specific system under design. Unfortunately, it also requires some means of selecting values for all parameter to define the best scheduler. Although the multi-level feedback queue scheduling is the most general scheme and it is also more complex. For example, a multi-level queue scheduler have three ready queue. We already discussed ready queue 1, ready queue 2, ready queue 3. So the scheduler first execute all processes in ready queue 1. Only when the ready queue 1 is empty, it will execute the ready queue. Similarly, when the ready queue 2 is executed and the ready queue 1 and ready queue 2 is empty, a process that arrived ready queue 1 preempted to process ready queue, a process of ready queue 2 will turn to preempted by a process arriving in ready queue 1. A process enter into the ready queue is put into the ready queue 1. A process ready queue 1 is given time quantum 8 milliseconds. If it is, does not finish within 8 milliseconds, it moves to the tail of ready queue 2. The processes in ready queue 2 execute only when ready queue 1 is, ready queue 1 has no processes. The process at the head of ready queue 1 is given time quantum 16. So if it is does not complete within the time, it moves to the tail of the ready queue 3. So the process in ready queue 3 are run on first come first serve basis. So the processes of ready queue 3 will execute only the ready queue 1 and ready queue 2 is empty. The 
main advantage of multi level feedback queue scheduling is the algorithm it is flexible it can be used to implement many different policies it is a good balance of priority and fairness it is shorter process will complete quickly and the longer process need not to wait much time in the ready queue and it will gradually draft downward and the disadvantage of a multi level feedback queue scheduling is complexity of code and runtime efficiency so thank you for listening if you have any query feel free to contact me this is my mail id and see you soon at the next lecture thank you